so today is the day that I start my sweet peas and I'm super excited it's beautiful out it's kind of cool but it's okay but I'll show you everything that I do to get them going I have grown them indoors probably for years now but I'm going to start them by direct sowing them and I'm taking a big <gasps> there's a slug walking across the floor I have to pick it up that is exactly what I need to prevent so I'll show you what I do for that I'll show you what sweet peas I'm growing how I grow them indoors how I'm growing them outdoors how to support them about pests and what they suffer from that you want to treat and how to harvest and collect the seeds so if you want to learn more about sweet peas just follow me today let's go get the seeds you are not going to live in this house I'm gonna get you I have my sweet peas here. I've gotten so many packages. These are some planters I got. This is a really cool trellis. I'll show you in another video. I'll unbox it. But I have my sweet peas here and some of these irises that I bought. I bought two different ones for next year. So I got to plant those. I haven't even gotten to those. But I have to get my seeds and find the sweet peas that I'm going to be doing. I have four sweet peas that I'm gonna grow this year. I don't think I wanna grow more than that, four different ones. I have a lot more, but I really wanna try these. The first one is Mars from Johnny Seeds. And uh, I try to pick ones that have fragrance. So some of these do, some don't. I think if you look, you can find so many that have like ruffles. They look very vintage and beautiful. And then a lot of them have, it's just a beautiful fragrance to them. This one is really fragrant. It's called Incense Peach, Peach Shades. Sorry, I can't speak. But this one is from Burpee. The other one was from Johnny Seeds. And then this one is called, I love this one. This is a great little anchor color for like, if you do really soft color sweet peas. This one has a burgundy, really rich tone. It's called Biao Jola. I'll just type it. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's from botanical gardens I believe yeah botanical interest and then the floret one this one I don't know that she sells them anymore because I think she's doing originals but I got one the growers growers choice umbriosa mix and it's just her package but I'll put an image it's um these are all really pretty and I think they will do amazing so just look at the ones that you select to see they have a fragrance and there are so many but just pick the ones you love and if you do one anchor color that's a darker tone it will make everything just stand out even more which is really pretty so if you're gonna grow them indoors I you know there's they are retainers which I've used in the past but I found that containers, even like this, I don't, I think you can roll them in a container. I grow four of them in this container. I put one on every corner. And then if you want to grow one, you can get a pot that's tall like this or even taller. And they do fine. You can probably grow two of them in here. I think those fruit trainers are so expensive and they're kind of flimsy. They fall apart. They don't last. So you can use them it's great if you want to use them but you don't have to if you're starting so i would save the money and just grow them uh, in a larger pot if you're growing indoors i still think growing them outdoors is really really good depending on your weather but this is a good solution look at all my seedlings they're all doing really good i potted some this is my hibiscus and i have some of the super petunias these are all my cilantros, basil. I have to apply a lot of things that I haven't done, but but I digress. And as far as soil, again, I think this sweet peas are super hardy. Just get a seed starting so soil or or uh, any potting soil and they do fine they're really so much tougher than people think i find them one of the easiest plants to grow so the only hard part about them is the slugs as you can tell in my place otherwise a good container that's deep and potting soil and it will do just fine 
you can see some that I grew last year and they have two per pot on the right side with the tall pot I showed you and then on the left is the root trainer they both did just fine when I planted them outside I don't think they're so picky on the roots being disturbed as um, has been said before but again I have you know I've had very good luck with them it is very important that you pinch as the stem grows at six inches. Find the first set of leaves and cut it right above it. You can do it with your hands, your fingers, or a pair of scissors. If you decide to grow them indoors, make sure that you rub them so that they get strong. And don't keep them indoors for too long. Make sure that you look at the package and grow them at the right time. This is last year when I grew them indoors and you can just make a hole deep enough to put the roots all the way in. And I like putting fertilizer on the bottom. If you do that, then as soon as they go ahead and get settled, they'll start taking the food and grow a lot better than if you don't put any fertilizer, just slow release fertilizer. I think they did so well and grew so tall that it was just incredible to watch them and be able to harvest so many of them. One of the things that I realized last year is that my trellis didn't go all the way to the ground and I had to put a piece of bamboo stick and be able to train them to go up onto the trellis. So that did not work great for me. So I decided I am going to go ahead and replace this setup completely. I have some bamboo trellis and just custom trellis that my husband made with some metal trellises. I think it will look a lot prettier. One of the challenges is that green vertical garden. I located it back here and I'm gonna take those down because I don't water the dahlias very often, which is great for the sweet pea because I don't have to water the sweet peas very often to prevent powdery mildew. And this vertical garden pieces need a lot more watering. So that was not a good combination. So I'm gonna place them in a different location where it won't affect any of my other flowers. This is where I get all my trellises. And they have a person in California that makes them for me. These are the arches I get, arch trellis. But they have benches and all of these things. I just got one that I'll show you later. That one there in the back. But they have all sorts of design, so pretty. The dragonfly. All sorts of different ones for you to decorate all the ones to hang i got one not this one a different one to hang that i'll be showing you eventually and yeah they have really pretty things this is he's so talented and they had this custom trellis made for this store look how beautiful that is Incredible. So pretty. For those that don't know me, my name is Melba. I am an urban home gardener and I try to grow as much as I can in food and flowers in my tiny backyard. This is an extra step I take when I get a late start. As you know, I got COVID and I've been out. So I just want to gain, even if it's an extra day, I do this process. You don't have to, they germinate anyway, but I do it just because sometimes I'm late like this time. So I fill up a little jar with water, just room temperature water. And then I go ahead and take my seeds 
and I rub them against the sandpaper and that process is called scarify so you're just making a little scar on it to go ahead and take a little bit of the shell off so it just germinates a little faster you can also put them between wet paper towels and put them in a ziplock and they'll germinate and you can see which seeds uh, are viable and which are not but i'm gonna plant like two per hole that i put outside so that i have a better chance so we'll see how they do when i plant them I let the seeds soak for 24 hours. Don't leave them in the water for a really long period more than that. You can do it maybe two days, but they do rot. It's the same if you plant them outside when it's super wet, they will rot. So 24 hours is the best timing to leave them in the jar of water. Make sure you label your seeds if you really want to know what grew well and what you are falling in love with. And as you save your seeds, you want to know what you're saving. It is so important to label. I always have an issue with labeling and this year I want to be as careful as possible because some of these seeds are not produced anymore. And I want to make sure to save the seeds for both because of that and also because I save tons of money by harvesting my own seeds. If you have found value on this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. This will allow us to get to more people for them to create their own garden oasis. I like to select a spot to put the trellises and my sweet peas that get sun throughout the day. And here, even though we get really high temperatures in the end of July, sometimes August, I still can use it because this section here is all my flowers and the dahlias, so the dahlias will shade the roots 
as long as you keep the roots cool they will do really well i find this to be super effective because they end up lasting me all the way until september they pretty much are taken out by the rain and powdery mildew and we'll talk a little more what you can do to prevent some powdery mildew which i do and it does help me for them to last me much longer another slug this is not gonna be a good year i have to really treat the soil why i use um, the pellets for the snails i usually use logo but i didn't have any at home depot when i went so i'm gonna try this one i just sprinkler around on the ground early on in the season and it just dries the slime from the slugs and then they don't survive but you don't want to do it i don't think when it's really wet i try not to do it when it's super wet if it's gonna rain so i'm gonna wait a little bit to put it out but obviously i have a lot of slugs to deal with i use this fish plant food to go ahead and spray on the leaves of the plants so when they're grown if you dilute this with water follow the instructions here for how much to put from the liquid to water and then just spray it on your leaf put it in a bottle and spray it and it really helps with powder and mildew i do this to my sweet peas and my dahlias and it works really really well this is great stuff To get the most blooms, make sure that you harvest consistently so they won't turn into seeds. And come fall, harvest the seed pods, let it go into seed pods so you can have beautiful sweet peas and seeds that you will not have to buy again. <music>